Watching Harmony and Diversity, and today we're speaking with Reverend Dr. Gordon Priest. He's the director of the Ethos Centre for Christianity and Society, and an Anglican minister. Thanks for coming in, Gordon. Pleasure, Norm. I presume that you were a Christian from birth. What does your life look like from that point? From that point, um, well, I can't quite remember uh, back to my my birth, but um, <laughs> like something, something happened just before my birth that, that did have, I think, a fairly formative effect. Um, and I only really found out, um, oh, it's uh, quite later in, later in life, um, because, because my mother, who had a, had a mental illness and mm -hmm. had had shock treatment, uh, mm -hmm. there was one day when I was in my oh, 40s, she um, called up and said she'd found the death certificate for my elder brother. Mm. Now, I knew I had an elder brother and, mm. uh, and I'd given my sisters a hard time. Mm. So, oh, I have a brother. You know, I wish I'd had a brother. Mm. Um, his name was Guy. Um, he died. And this is what she told me. Um, she told me he died the day I was born. Right. But uh, she'd actually misphrased it. He, was, he died a year to the day. Mm. when I was born, mm -hmm. which is significant enough. Mm. You know, there was something mm. very, you know, significant about, about that. All three of us were uh, named with a G after him. My oh, mother really? still had on her yes. number plates mm -hmm. um, uh, three Gs, G, 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 uh, in, in mm. memory of him. I, I can't help think that had something to do with her, mm. her mental illness mm. later. Um, mm. But, yeah, so... Um, I think there was something quite profound in, in that uh, for me at a kind of precognitive yes. kind, of, kind of level. And I know my parents regarded me as a great gift from God, um, mm. that, that they were able to have a, have a child mm. um, and, to, and to have a son, not, not in any sense as a replacement. You know, everyone's absolutely unique. Mm. Um, but uh, I think there was very much a sense of being, being wanted and, yes. and loved. And um, in, in terms of that, um, later there was a particular significant experience that I, I had when I was really in some ways getting in touch with that um, loss of a, a, a brother. My, I, I can remember my, my wife going off and doing a, a course that was a sort of free to live, free to love course. And, you know, how to get in touch with the, mm -hmm. your, your inner feelings. Yes. And I was watching a movie called Ordinary People. Mm -hmm. And Ordinary People was a story about a family that had had um, havoc wreaked upon it by the loss of the elder brother. And the, the mother had been in many ways destroyed by that. Um, the father had done his best to try and hold things together. The younger son had always blamed himself mm -hmm. for somehow not being strong enough to hold on to the elder brother after a boating accident. And right. the elder brother uh, yeah. drowned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until finally, we uh, have a one day to see that uh, maybe it was that the older brother had actually been hadn't been able to hold on mm -hmm. and stop blaming himself. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember I watched this show, and then I just just uncontrollable sobbing came over me. Good heavens! It was like something mm -hmm. this movie had triggered something mm -hmm. incredibly profound in relationship to my own my own brother. Um, Sometimes it's been very special to me to think of, of Christ as a kind of, as, as the Bible pictures him, as the sort of eldest brother, um, okay. mm. the, uh, the, first, the firstborn of many brothers and sisters, yes. is that kind of picture, the firstborn from the dead. Um, mm. and, and I've often thought of, in, in some ways, as, as Jesus is a bit like that kind of elder brother in that sense. Mm. Um, now, I think he's not only that. No. No. But, and there's, there's a lot of other, other things in my own story um, in relationship to that. Um, my, my, my family was, was more a nominal Christian family. Um, it was, it was a, in a Presbyterian sort of family, the Scottish heritage. Uh, they sent us along to Sunday school and um, they went occasionally. Um, but for me, when I, when I went and when I read 
when I read the Bible, the Bible read me. And it was a very, there was a very strong sense of that. Was there? That it was mm. my, my own human nature and it's kind of, mm. it's glory and it's grottiness. Um, mm. All of that, that I, that I felt that was holding up a mirror to me. And, and that was, you know, fundamental in terms of my own, my own sense of, of Christian belief. How old, how old were you when that, when that occurred? Oh, I think that was going on probably from, I, I can think, you know, nine, ten, you know, from mm -hmm. times I was sort of in, in Sunday school and that. Um, but I do remember a particular sort of experience when I was probably around 13 or 14 and we'd uh, moved houses and we lived opposite the National Park in um, the Sutherland Shire in Sydney mm -hmm. and had a balcony and could, could stand under the stars at night. And, and you didn't have the interference from lots of city lights. Right. So, uh, and, and dealing with my own kind of teenage sense of angst and identity crisis <laughs> and all of that, just the, the sense of the enormity of creation right. and, and the even greater enormity of God that God could have created that. And, and yet, okay. you know, in the Psalm 8 kind of way, you know, what is, mm. what is man that you bother about us, the sons of men that you care about us? You know, when I look at the stars mm. in the sky, etc. Um, still, that the sense that even even in my smallness, that, that you know God, God had bothered to make me and to and to speak to me and mm. to put us as humans in charge of the world in a sense and, and responsible to Him and responsible to care for creation and mm. look after it. Um, that was a very very profound experience mm. for for me at, at about about that age. So, do you sort of feel that you might have had the the mark of 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 being a, a a religious on you at that stage was it sort of driving it in that way? Um, I I think like I always wanted to do something important in my life, and that mm. now some of, some of that's just kind of in you know, a bit of you know adolescent kind of you know um, identity crisis mm. uh, and and that. But I I think I think I had a sense uh, developed of a sense of calling that. Mm. Um, that if if this God was really so big and really and really true, then there was nothing more important I could do with my life than try and share that with people. Yeah. Not in a way of imposing that, but in a yeah. in a form of dialogue with with people about sharing the things that are the, the most deep yes. in, in in our lives. And so I've always been fairly quick to get into mm. fairly deep conversation with well, with people and, and Rather than be quick, we'll have to be unquick at the moment. We're out of time and we'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. You're watching Harmony and Diversity. And we're speaking with Reverend Dr. Gordon Priest. He's a director of the Ethos Center for Christianity and Society, and he's an Anglican minister. Gordon, we were talking about calling. How did that calling generate within you? You've, you've gone on to quite a lot of involvement. How did the calling look like? Yeah, um, there's a, an American author who talks about your, your call is where the, the world's deepest hunger and your greatest joy meet. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, and joy is connected, I think, with your with your gifts, mm -hmm. which I think come from God. Uh, your gifts and talents, etc. You know, some of some of which are kind of you could say natural, but or, or created. Some of which are cultivated mm -hmm. over time. And, and mm -hmm. I suppose for me, it was uh, well. I can I can remember giving a, 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 a speech with a member of Parliament sitting at the, the the front row at the school speech night when I was mm -hmm. about twelve. And uh, so I can remember. I was like, yeah, I can I can do this. I can speak in public. Um, mm -hmm. Um, having to stand up for my my faith um, in front of um, not just the Billy Graham crusade, which was right. relatively easy in front of fifty thousand, frankly, in nineteen sixty eight mm. at the age mm. of fourteen, but mm. at school, yes. in in and this wasn't a religious school; it was it, it wasn't a private school; it was a public school, and uh, and being challenged to stand up for my faith and um, yes. literally stand up in yes. front of everyone who was sitting down. And so, so for me, a lot of it has been a calling to stand up in public as, right. as a Christian, that your Christianity can't be a privatised thing, it can't be a Sunday thing. Um, right. 
And I think I, I, I learned a fair bit of that sort of working alongside my father in the family business, mm -hmm. the concrete products business, that mm -hmm. uh, you had to integrate your faith and your, and your work. Um, right. Some of that stuff, uh, you know, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing properly. Yes. Um, it's got to be a 24-7 thing. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that was always, um, for me, if, if the, the God was big enough to create the universe, if Jesus was the, the word who, um, through whom the universe was expressed then and, and created, then that's a 24-7 thing. That's not mm -hmm. something that's shut up on a Sunday. Um, mm -hmm. It's got to be a, a Monday to Friday. Yes kind of thing um, that's in, in, in my work. Um, so I, I've um, basically got a, a, a doctorate in theology of, of, of work and mm -hmm. vocation or calling. Right. And um, in play, I, I, did want, I did want to be a professional soccer player and I, and right. I still play soccer now at the age of mm -hmm. 60. And, um, and uh, so a bit like Eric Liddell, you know, when he says, when I, when I run, I feel... When I run, I feel God's pleasure, he said to his, yeah. his, his missionary <laughs> sister. Well, um, for me, it's when I, when I run with a ball, I feel God's pleasure. Right. So, right. so whether it's work or play, yeah. um, I, I have a sense of God's calling in, in, mm. in all of that. And, uh, mm. and, and, and all of that I regard as a, you know, part, of, part of ministry and part of worship mm. um, with, a, with a sense of gratitude to, to God for being able to do those things. It just flows out of that. Yes, yes, with, with deep roots, because uh, when you mentioned Billy Graham, did, do I understand that you got up and sp spoke at, at, uh, at one of his uh, rallies? Uh, no, I, I spoke at, sc like at, at, at school. At the, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, right, at, right, at a speech right. night at, yes, at yes, school. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so that kind of gave me the sense, well, yeah, I can actually sp speak up. This, it wasn't on a yes. specifically religious topic or, no. or anything like that at that, at that time, mm -hmm. but, but later being challenged to mm. stand up in front of my, my peers yep. as, a, as a Christian and make mm. a commitment to Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, that, was, that was even more significant. Like, you know, mm. in your, in, it, it's got to be fleshed out in your school or your workplace, yes. your home, on the soccer field or sports field. It, it's got to be fleshed out in those contexts or it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It doesn't, mm. doesn't have any credibility. It doesn't mean that you've got to be perfect, but, mm. but you're, you're moving in that that direction and, and want to see God rule in all of those areas of life. Mm. For me, that's been critical. Yes. Well, how were you at university? Did, did, was there a challenge at university? Or it's... Yeah, yeah, certainly lots of challenges because I, I went to, to Sydney University and uh, a sandstone university mm. as, they, as they call them. And, mm. and I, I can remember like I, I had just come from you know, I, I did have some trouble in high school, and and particularly when you know my, my mother went through her two nervous breakdowns, as you called them then. You know, I was a mm -hmm. pretty teary teenager. Mm -hmm. I, I mm -hmm. often think that was kind of my own sort of yeah. way of sort of sympathising with with her. And um, but I, I did find out I did have an intelligence test when I was in year eleven that, that mm -hmm. told me I was in the sort of top one percent. And mm -hmm. um, and I'd been given a fairly hard time by friends at school and that, and because I mm. didn't do that well up till year 10. Um, but then I just started to devour lit literature, history, et cetera. Um, I, I did e extremely well in the, in the HSC. And, but then first year of uni, I was doing philosophy mm. and you had, and, and Sydney <laughs> University's <laughs> philosophy department was notoriously atheistic. And, yes. and it was pretty much shoved down your throat, you know. Mm -hmm. There wasn't much tolerance for religion whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an essay on the meaning of life and mm -hmm. Christianity. Mm -hmm. And I kind of brought up my best sort of C.S. Lewis and uh, Francis Schaeffer and other sorts of things in, in, in responding to this question. I got four out of ten and I was devastated, absolutely devastated. But there was, there was um, another Christian at, at uni who just really challenged me to just really, you know, read and, and kind of devour Christian literature and, and stuff that engaged with, with philosophy and other things. Not, not in some right. sort of kind of retreat, no. but in a way that engaged the world of the university and the event. And war was going on, you know, a conscientious objective was released on campus. Okay. Um, and, and so I just devoured this stuff. Um, I think I ended up topping the exam in philosophy. Um, and, I, and I thank that guy for the challenge. Mm -hmm. And I ran the bookstore for the Christian Union. 
And we used to be set up like next to the Spartacists, the, 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 the communist group. And, you know, it's interesting to have discussions with them and realise they had denominations like we do too amongst the Marxists. And I'd take the bookstore home and I'd basically read the whole bookstore, you know, like I I would read the bookstore at home. I just had to make sure I didn't kind of crease the the leaves of the books or anything. And, you know, when if they had to be taken back later to the bookshop. So that was... um, and, and my father, thankfully, he'd, he'd um, yeah, and mum, they'd paid for me to do a speed reading course, you know, when I was in high oh, school. Oh, right. Yes. So they had, they had kind of shown belief in me, and, mm. that, and that, was, that was very important. Mm. And, um, so, well, well, speed reading is an issue which is designed to save time. We'll just take a break. Yep. We'll be back in a moment. You're watching Harmony and Diversity, and we're speaking with Reverend Dr. Gordon Priest. Calling looks as though you had a powerful calling after or during university. I think you married, didn't you? How did, how did that carry on with your calling? Yeah, well, I, th- I think calling isn't just something in just in relationship to, to work or calling or, or vocation. I, I mm. think there's, there's calling relationally and, um, you know, otherwise you can just end up being a workaholic and, mm. and, uh, and, I, and I probably have some tendencies that way. But I, th- I think fundamentally to have a sense of being called to share my life with uh, Susan um, at a relatively young age. We, we met uh, when we were about in our early yeah, 20, basically, I think I was, mm. I was about 20 or so. Um, and and that, that sense of being deeply accepted by someone. And right. I think, um, you know, we, we, we both share the same faith, um, but a deep sense of being accepted as I, as I was. For me, that was a kind of parable of, of God's love for me. And, 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 and having had a, you know, somewhat disturbed kind of adolescence, you know, yes. with those issues with my mother's mental illness, and that to, um, and, and you know, but I, I knew my mother loved me, um, but to meet a, a really, really sane, sane woman. <laughs> and, um, but you know, when we, when we were married, there's, there's also another side that when you, um, I've often reflected that when you say those vows, and I, and I love the kind of traditional sorts of vows for sickness, mm. in sickness and in health, you know, for mm. richer, for poorer, till death is too part. But uh, when you say in sickness and in health, you, you don't necessarily realize, you know, that, you know, you're, you're, your spouse or partner's, you know, um, sickness that they might have in the future or whatever, um, or your children, yeah. and 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 you know one of the one of the things that has been particularly difficult for uh, for for me personally and and uh, for our family, um, but something that God has brought in great brought great good out of in in the long run, has has been um, I guess the effect of my my mother's. Mental health genes on mm. you know um, in in our, in our family um, mm. in, in my son in particular like I have his permission to talk about this um, um, you know he's he's progressed incredibly you know from from those days and is incredibly heroic but um, he he developed bipolar disorder and um, and that has been a um, a, a big issue uh, for him um, and we had two. Um, times we talk, called the Malanus Horribiluses in our Christmas letters, um, four years apart, um, that were very, very difficult. And he he a, a, appeared on 60 Minutes talking about about that. He was very oh, right. brave. He mm. wanted to share that, and and mm. and he is a, is a fantastic example that there is there is hope for people mm. um, with with mental illness and and that. Mm. Um, and he's very happily married. Um, he's studying at university. Right. Um, and uh, and in, he's one of my heroes. Mm. Um, but that's led in many ways the, the whole family in in various ways. Um, I guess to be kind of wounded healers in in in, in the sense of um, my my wife works in the area of mental health training carers mm-hmm. and and right. seeking to try and give them them hope and and help them to have perseverance. Okay. Um, mm. uh, my my daughter works with with refugees who uh, who've often suffered you know trauma and, and, and abuse mm. and persecution, and um, her husband is is training to be a psychiatrist. And uh, there's so there's a there's a strong kind of 
yes. thread running through the family in, in, in terms of that. And, mm. um, and, and, and so I, I think we've, we've really experienced God's grace in a very deep way and, and healing in a very deep way through that. And, mm. uh, you know, I, th I think uh, we've seen lots of miracles yes. through, that, through that process. And, um, and yet, yet we've got great sympathy for people who, who haven't necessarily seen that. Yes. And, and yet um, battle on and persevere. And sometimes I wonder how they get out of bed in the morning, but yes. they continue to, whether that's a person who may suffer with a mental illness or whether that's a person who's, and persons who are caring for them. Yes. Um, I guess we really want to empower those people and encourage mm. them mm. And, and, uh, and, and in many ways admire them in their, in, in, in their journey. Mm. And I think some of them see things that, that others don't. You know, mm. like like a Van Gogh, for instance. Mm. You know, mm. he he's, he painted Starry Starry Night, mm -hmm. uh, which was a kind of Psalm eight kind mm. of thing, like I was talking about before. Yes. He, he painted yes, yeah. that, um, at least some versions of that, from the the mental hospital. Yes. And uh, and I think he could see things mm. that uh, other people who we might label more normal <laughs> couldn't actually see. That's right. And to use the word normal is is dangerous. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a it's a spectrum. You know, we're we're, we're right. all under under a certain level of stress. Mm. Yes, can can find ourselves really succumbing and and, and going under and and coming mm. to the point where we might be labelled mentally ill. Mm. That's that's clearly been a directional thing in 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 the way in which your ministry has gone. Would that be a fair observation that it sort of yeah, like like I think um, the, the 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 term wounded wounded healer is is something that I think um, you know you you get sensitised to suffering in your own background. Obviously, my mother's my mother's suffering. Mm. The the point, by the way, where I realised my my mum most loved me mm. was when uh, because she couldn't cry much because of the the shock treatment that she'd had. Mm. Um, when she wept, when I told her I'd missed out on by one point on the state under sixteen soccer team. And I wanted oh, to be right. a professional soccer player, oh, and right. and she wept, and I was yes. able to weep because of that. So um, connected that, with that. That is, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's my most fond memory mm. of my mother, mm. um, and so that that opens up, I think, a way of being able to try and connect Absolutely. with with people and share and weep with those who weep, just as Jesus wept um, at the tomb of Lazarus when he mm. connected with the grief of Mary and Martha and his own yes. loss of his friend, mm. Lazarus, you realise mm. there's a God who, a God who weeps human tears. Yes. And that makes all the difference in the end and then enables you to weep with those who weep, um, and not just rejoice with those who rejoice, you know. Mm. Very powerful. As, but, but also rejoice with those who rejoice. Yes, of so. course. Very powerful. Look, we're getting towards the end and, and uh, I think there's a lot more stuff we can explore. Would you be happy to come back next week Gordon? Sure, love to. Thank you very much. We'll be back next week with uh, Gordon Priest, and thanks for watching. Shanti Allah.